Of all the variety of architectural experiments, world records, and unique monumental structures of Nur Sultan, the complex structure of the Palace of Peace and Reconciliation stands out with its external simplicity. The decision of the universal aesthetic language for interfaith communication and complementary culture dialogue was embodied by the famous British architect Norman Foster. The winner of the Pritzker Prize, an analog of the Nobel Prize in the architectural community, he built the first building of its kind in the capital in 2006. The pyramid has three levels, the underworld, the earth and the sky. It consists of three parts. We can see it on the layout. The underworld covers the underground floor, the first and the second floors. As for the third floor and above, everything is decorated in white colors. But in order to see it, we need to go upstairs. The project of this wide communication platform was presented on September 24, 2003. The Congress itself is an organic realization of the reliance on the peaceful dialogue of cultures and inter-ethnic harmony. Symbolically, this was reflected in the conceptual design of the top of the pyramid. On a stained glass window designed by the painter Brian Clark, there are 130 pigeons symbolizing the nationalities living on Kazakh land. On the third floor, there is the largest conference hall, which is called the Atrium, a winter garden, and on the eighth floor, a small conference hall, the Cradle. There is a panoramic view of our entire capital. We are here now. Everything is in black color. Pay attention that everything below the third floor is located underground, and black color symbolizes the underworld. Not only spectacular, but also effective use of a giant space of 28,000 square meters requires exclusive solutions. For example, elevators with a slope of 60 degrees. There are elevators just like that in the famous Eiffel Tower and the Pyramid Hotel Luxor in Las Vegas. It took the shortest time possible from the construction of the project to its full functional use. As for the construction, it began in the fall of 2005. More than 2,000 builders of different nationalities took part in this project, and the foundation itself was made of steel. The total weight of the entire metal structure is 5,100 tons. The pyramid was built pretty quickly, in just 13 months. For such a large-scale construction, it is rather a short term. The dialogue of cultures implies a productive exchange of ideas, according to the ethical code of a modern workplace. At the beginning, every idea should be presented to potential opponents in as many details as possible, at least in order to bring your opponents during presentation to the camp of your partners. Fortunately, in the upper hall of the building, there are every conditions for performances of any caliber. The opera hall is designed for 1,302 seats. This includes the main floor, Belutage, the first and the second balcony. Here you can see concerts of any level of complexity, as well as performances of opera and ballet and film screenings. At the opening of the palace, on September 1, 2006, Montserrat Caballé performed in our opera hall. The hall has very good acoustics, since everything is made of natural materials. It is comfortable for opera singers who come to us with different kind of performances. They do not use microphones. Here, as it turned out, is a very good acoustics. From any part of the hall, you can perfectly hear and see everything. The atrium, the most grandiose hall of the palace, continues the image of the ultra-modern platform for the establishment of communications, where exclusive opportunities for productive, constructive communication are created. The huge gracefully constructed space with an area a little bit more than three square meters impresses deeply with whiteness and nobleness of marble. Through the windows located on all sides of the pyramid, the light fills the hall from dusk to dawn. You can have time to listen to all the invited speakers, even with a maximum seating density of 500 people. Of course, such a multifunctional springboard for the application of creativity is in demand 365 days a year. Every year in the Opera Hall, we host the Assembly of the People of Kazakhstan. 
film screenings, concerts, opera and ballet performances, different congresses and sessions. Most of the time, we hold concerts or some kind of contests. They are carried out here. Well, you can see the whole program on the website of our palace. Yes, these blue details are made of glass. They can be opened from the inside. This way, the sun shines down on the upper hole. If you prefer to go upstairs on foot instead of taking the elevator, choose a staircase surrounded by a unique winter garden. Here too you will appreciate the architect's careful handling of a natural light. It's easy to imagine how the atmosphere of the upper part of the building contributes to the positive outcome of the most difficult negotiations. Now we will go upstairs, which is surrounded on both sides by a winter garden. It consists of 70% of live plants and 30% artificial. Pay attention to both stairs. They do not intersect anywhere, but lead to the top of the pyramid. The plants are brought from the Netherlands. By the way, from here you can see the third floor, Atrium Hall. With all the diversity of the events taking place at the Palace of Peace and Reconciliation, the most attention here, of course, goes to the Authentic Congress. Its extensive, versatile program offers the possibility of using the potential of the palace to the maximum extent. We also hold conferences, sometimes congresses of a smaller scale. In that case, the hall accommodates only 100 people. All the delegates and guests gather on the third floor in a large conference hall. The Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions is the most important event of our palace. It is held every three years. The very first Congress took place in 2003. Back then it was held at Sultanat Sari. After the palace was built specifically for the Congresses, the second Congress took place here at the Palace of Peace and Reconciliation in 2006. The initiative of the first president of the country immediately received wide support from the world community. Among the active supporters of the dialogue visiting the Kazakh capital are world religious leaders and activists of different denominations. The top three of them, which are just heading an endless list of names, are the Secretary General of the World Islamic League, Sheikh Aturki, the Patriarch of the Russian Orthodox Church, Alexei II, and the Roman Pope, John Paul II. At these congresses, the discussed topics are connected with a religious theme. Since at the moment, this is probably one of the most global topics. They are trying to make sure that all religions are friendly among each other. For comfortable coexistence, each religion requires a respect to freedom, both in the figurative and in the direct physical sense. Fortunately, the open spaces of the capital make it possible to realize the concepts of creating mosques that have been tested by centuries at a new level. Azret Sultan Mosque accommodates about 12,000 people. During the religious holiday of Eid and on Friday Namaz, about 13, 14,000 worshippers come here. Since the territory of the mosque is big, people can pray outside. Therefore, we lay 5,000 square meters of floor mats for Namaz on the street. In addition, parking is provided for thousands of cars. 11 hectares of land is occupied by a garden. Azir Sultan Mosque has already been appreciated by the residents of the city. Even conceptually, the mosque planned to have an active work with the population. It was designed not only as a place for prayer, but also as a center for culture and knowledge. We have a television and radio studio and a Muslim.kz website in two languages. In addition, we help people with family and religious problems. In other words, we give a helping hand to people in difficult situations. For the very first time, a call center was opened at the Hazret Sultan Mosque, which operates 24 hours a day. People can call and ask questions that bother them, be they psychological, religious or family related. Specialists work here in shifts. Uh, 
This is a feedback mechanism for seekers from all over the country, but of course, the most active help falls on pilgrims. Muslims in need of good advice and spiritual support come here from all over the world. Pilgrims often come here. I recently spoke with one of them. His name is Dawlet Hajim. He is from Simei. Dawlet Hajim reached Mecca on foot covering 7,000 kilometers in three months. We are proud of him. May Allah be pleased with him. You can appreciate a modest-looking finish of the walls, which reveals a huge amount of work invested in the erection and processing of these walls only when you come up close. It was certainly chosen not by chance. It suggests the correct behavioral pattern for the worshippers of the mosque. Azrit Sultan Mosque from afar looks white, but when you approach it, you can see patterns and ornaments. This mosque is not only for Muslims, it unites all people. The mosque has become a center for tourists. Guests come here from abroad on holidays. They visit our mosque and admire its beauty, architecture and spiritual aura. Of course, all the official representatives of countries where Islam as a significant part of national identity are noted. Official representatives, famous people, presidents of countries from Europe, the United States, visit the Hazrat Sultan Mosque. Chinese television channels with 300 million or maybe even a billion TV viewers shot a special program about our mosque. If we will talk about the people who visited Hazret Sultan, then one of them is the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry. The next year after him came his deputy. In addition to them, the mosque was visited by the Prince of Saudi Arabia, the President of Finland, and other high-ranking officials from different countries. <laughs> Eighty percent of the total area of the mosque is decorated with ornaments, executed with regard to advanced architectural features. Huge areas of open spaces are especially appreciated on major holidays. In the architectural design, the project contains very clear references to samples of Asian architecture. The entrance is an allusion to the mausoleum of Ahmed Yasawi. Actually, the name Hazred Sultan is his pseudonym. Hazred means honorable, and he was called Sultan for his educational achievements. In a way, this is a tribute to the wisdom of Yasawi. I visited many cities of Kazakhstan, but the main difference between this mosque is its size and the conditions for worshippers. And no matter with what problem people come here, men who are working here are always ready to lend a handling hand. I am very grateful to them. In Hazret Sultan, there are always a lot of people, there is order in everything here. During Ramadan, our Zashar or Iftar is given every day. May Allah be pleased with them. The construction was carried out together with almost the entire world. Creation of the record hold of the Central Asian region required the mobilization of significant efforts. The result in figures is impressive. The area of the entire mosque of Hazret Sultan is over 11 hectares, and the area of all the buildings belonging to the complex is 17,700 square meters. For the construction of the Hazret Sultan Mosque, materials were brought from 11 countries of the world. Advanced technologies were applied. The largest dome in Central Asia is also here. The height of the dome is 51 meters, width 28 meters. 
The dome is supported by 20 columns. There are air conditioners with an Italian cooling system under the racks. The same system is used in Mecca, in the mosque of the Prophet Muhammad. The main prayer house of the country with a dominant number of Muslims needs a strong infrastructure that takes into account the full range of potential needs. On the first floor, there are restrooms, a conference room and a restaurant for 500 people. The second floor is for men and the third floor is for women. There are also auditoriums for religious classes. In addition, there are office space and classrooms. The chief architect of the mosque, Hazret Sultan, is our compatriot Jean Bulatov. In the capital of Kazakhstan, a multicultural country with systemic task of maintaining communication among confessions, represented religious movements with the most significant number of followers. The Russian Orthodox worshippers of the city have their own record, the longevity of one of the temples. The history of the Konstantin Yelenetsky Church dates back to the mid-19th century. Константин Еленский собор является древнейшим памятником. Он построен еще в тысячу. Константин Еленский cathedral is the oldest monument. It was built in 1854 by the decree of Nicholas I. The temple consists of three levels, and the lower level was consecrated in honor of Prince Vladimir, and the area where we are now was built in honor of Constantine and Yelena. And now the third level was built in honor of Kirill and Methodius. If when looking around the interior of this temple you experience the déjà vu effect, you can completely trust it. Most likely you have already seen the similar Russian Orthodox Church. The thing is that this is a typical project. According to established canons, a parish with a small town should look like that. The uniqueness of this temple is that it is constructed entirely of wooden beams. They say that the timber wood was brought from Siberia, that it is a large brought on a sled. And these overlap. They were so soaked. This year, on June 3rd, we have already celebrated 165 years since the construction of the temple. The Konstantin Yelenitsky Church, where we are right now, used to be on the spot where the Hajimukan Munayt Pasov Stadium was now located. There was a fortress, and close to it, there was a small camp church. Over time, when the population of Akmala village increased, Prince Mikhail Nikolsky, somewhere in the mid-40s, began to petition for the construction of a new church in 1852. In 1854, the foundation of the church was laid. A circle of burned bricks was built on this foundation. The total building area of the temple is 333 square meters. The area of all promises is 627 meters. The height to the top of the cross is 25. At one time, the structure had to go through a very complicated transformation. In essence, the church moved to a new location which you see rarely happens to a multi-town law construction. The growing city then needed a bigger church, and at the beginning of the last century, the Konstantin Yelenitsky Church was dismantled and transferred to its central square. Over time, the Bolsheviks destroyed the great Alexander Nevsky Cathedral, and the cozy parish chamber again became very relevant. Because Akmolinsk was then a 
такой железнодорожной станции, куда привозили целые шлюзы. At the time, Akmolsk was a large railway station. People who fell under Stalin repression came on trains, and the only place where they could rest, their soul, feel support and divine help, was the temple. The walls of this temple are prayed in with their mournful prayers. Намолены вот их скорбными молитвами. To find peace in this big city is a special delight. Therefore, the value of the Konstantin Yelenetsky Church for those who seek peace is unshakable. I have been going to this church for many years. I have known this fence for a long time, and it always brought me such calmness, grace, and the best mood. You leave this place with a clear mind, happy and content. The Catholics of the capital and its frequent guests, representatives of the international delegations, also have their own shelter, of course. The most memorable visit was by the head of the Catholic Church. In 2001, this modest parish church was visited by the Pope John Karol Wojtyla. They started to build this temple first as a parish because at the time the city wasn't a capital. Construction began sometime in the mid-90s and ended in 1999. The temple was officially opened in 1999. The consecration of the church took place also that year. Eventually, the church became the cathedral. It was designed and built on the outskirts of the city, but Nur Sultan grew and now the temple is in the thick of things of the city. It should be emphasized that the prayer in this temple takes place around the clock. An interesting thing happened in our church after the visit of the Pope in April 2002. Exactly on April 14th, the 24-hour prayer began. And whenever you go to the church, there is a prayer room, and there is always someone from Nur Sultan or people from other cities, there's always someone who prays for the whole Kazakhstan. At night, everyone sleeps. A soldier from the guard of the president, his eyes are closing, he tries not to fall asleep. In this church, there is always someone who is always awake, who is praying. This is such a living fire of prayer. You come here to cleanse your soul. Your soul brightens and you become closer to God. Tomas Pat doesn't divide his parishioners into nationalities. He sincerely supports the mutual attraction of different religious concepts as a result of the traditional Congress of Leaders of World Religions. It has been held for the sixth time in the capital of Kazakhstan, and I personally consider it as a very important event. We do not raise theological issues there. We do not argue who is right. But the very fact that we meet as friends, as brothers, as sisters, is very important because creation of this atmosphere of goodwill and cooperation is the merit of Kazakhstan. Peace and harmony in action. Hundreds of thousands of worshippers in different languages, faithfully observing their canons, ask for consent among people of the whole world from the capital of Kazakhstan. If there had not yet been a unifying platform for all recognized religions in the world, it would really be worthwhile to invent it. Every three years, you can observe the progress of the idea of the spiritual structure of human life, the progress in establishing a constructive dialogue and taking confident steps towards mutual understanding from different sides, 
at the gatherings of the Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions.